So remember that we're a part of something ancient that's bearing fruit all over the world, something that can't be stopped, and the baton has come to us. Remember the prophetic promises and the gifts that God's uh, given us. Um, and then, and then uh, Paul keeps going as he keeps coaching Timothy up. And he moves uh, from verse uh, 14 to verse 15 of chapter 1. And Paul says, hey, you're aware that all who are in Asia, all who are in Asia turned away from me, among whom are Phygelus? I don't know, and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the household of one Zephorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. But when he arrived in Rome, he searched for me earnestly and found me. May the Lord grant him to find mercy from the Lord on that day. And you well know all the service he rendered at Ephesus. I think this is uh, interesting, but what I feel like Paul is wanting to say here to Timothy, or at least as I've read this, I find myself thinking, remember, relationships are the best, and they're the worst. You're aware, like everyone in Asia turned away from me, among whom are these two guys with, with bad names. But may the Lord grant mercy to the household of one Zephorus. He refreshed me. He was not ashamed of my chains. Uh, he searched for me earnestly and found me. And I just find myself needing to remember that the reason that relationships are the worst is because they're actually the best. And it is not an option for me to harden my heart. It is not an option for me to protect my heart. It is not an option for me to try to save myself. And I guess the question I would want to ask you at your table is who's somebody who's refreshing you? Like they're the best. And then would you also let us in to someone who's the worst? You, there aren't a lot of... <laughs> There aren't a lot of settings where we get to say, like, this guy's the worst. He's the worst guy in my life. Uh, remember, the reason that relationships are the worst is they're the best. They're a good thing. And we need them. The fourth thing I think uh, Paul coaches Timothy up with is this remember that character is key. Remember that character is key. If we read on in 2 Timothy 2, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also, share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. And it's the hardworking farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding into to everything. Character is key. Um, I, I am a bit of a perfectionist, and I find myself in most situations um, <laughs> frustrated because they're less than perfect. Yeah, I've been pursuing something um, that eludes me. And I, I find myself asking myself this question, and I want to put it before you. If your situation, which I get is far from perfect, but if your situation was perfect for something, what would it be perfect for? My tendency is to kind of resist things that aren't showing up the way I want them to show up, but what we resist tends to persist. And I find myself often needing to surrender to what is in order to receive what the Lord wants to do through that situation. So I want you to ask this question at your table. Or I guess finish this sentence. My circumstances are the perfect soil for God to produce blank. 
And then this question, my circumstances are also perfect soil for Satan to produce blank. His character is key. God's wanting to do something in us in these less than ideal circumstances. I know this one's a little deeper than who's bugging you most right now. But just think about your circumstances. These are perfect. This is perfect to produce what? And this is also an opportunity for Satan to produce what in your life? Go ahead, talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, I'm realizing that I gave you guys so many things to remember, you're probably not going to remember them. What was the first one? Remember? Heritage. What's the second one? Promises. What's the third one? Relationships are the best worst. What's the, what did we just talk about? Character. It's key. This is the last one. And this is the one, because I don't want you just to remember your grandma or your prophetic word or your relationships or your character. Paul would ultimately inspire endurance in Timothy by saying, remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead. The offspring of David, look at the, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal, but the word of God, it's not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we're faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remember Jesus Christ, his life, his death, his resurrection. Aren't we glad that he didn't quit in the dip? And aren't we glad that he saved quitters like us? How many times have we quit? And how many times has he extended himself to us? Just felt like it would be fitting to remember him and do what he said to do in remembrance of him. So would you come take the cup and take the bread? Don't take it individually. Take it back to your seat. We're going to take it all together. Jesus, give us strength. Jesus, we thank you for the heritage we have. Thank you for grafting us into this family through your work. Thank you for adopting us into this legacy. Thank you, Jesus, for speaking life over us, for declaring a bright future over us, for giving us promises and prophecies. Thank you, Lord, for speaking over me, a fatherless boy, that I would be a father. 
Thank you for announcing good words over our lives. We remember those. Thank you, Jesus, for not quitting on relationship. Thank you for not guarding your heart, protecting your heart, but extending yourself towards us. You had every reason to quit. You gave your very life for us. You didn't give us a speech. You didn't give us a smile. You gave your very blood for us. Thank you for extending yourself. We are not of those who shrink back, but we're of those who believe and are saved. And so we bring our arms out of the cast that they've been in. And we say we're going to reach again for, for people, people that you love. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And we're going to right now lay aside every weight, all the sin that's just clinging so closely. And we're going to run with endurance the race that you set before us. And we're going to look to Jesus. He's the founder. He's the perfecter of our faith. And he endured the cross. And there was joy that was set before him. He despised our shame. And he's seated at the right hand of God. And we consider right now him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself. And we're not going to grow weary or, or faint-hearted. Take the cup, his blood poured out for you. And take the bread, his body broken for you. And run, let us run, let's run, let's run, let's run with endurance.